Good morning guys and welcome to another video. Oh, it is a late start to the day. I don't know, it's 9.34. Shameful. Normally up by five. Had a late night. Oh well. Um, so today, <laughs> I've just realised I'm in the wrong car. <laughs> this is not a golf video today. Whoops, hang on. That's better. So today we'll be working on the old trusty family steed, the uh, good old 2010 1.4 Astra. And I didn't say turbo at the end of that, it is literally just a 1.4 petrol. So you guys know she's slow. But anyway, this is the old trusty family wagon um, and it is definitely due. I've had them for months, but I've been putting it back and back and back and back and back. But it's gotten to the point now where the front discs are, let's just say, not in the best of shape. So today I'm going to give you a quick rundown on how to change the front discs and pads on a 2010 Astra J or Mark 6 1.4 petrol. But I'm sure this applies for other models. So let's get on and do this. So behind me is the Astra, said Astra. I'm gonna, I've got this nice piece of wood to block off the rear wheels because I'm on a hill, but it doesn't hurt. And I've got a couple of bricks, or one brick, to go on that side under the wheel, so, because I'm on a quite a steep hill, so I'm gonna do that. Jack up the car. But first you wanna remove those annoying caps. 19 mil for your wheel bolts on the snow nuts on this. This has got studs. Um, so let's do that and then I'll get back to you right there. Alright, as you can see, Astra has these lovely wheel caps. Once they are taken off, you know the problems. You can loosen these. You want to do this when the car's still on the ground. Tires while she's there for any unusual wear. These look nice and meaty, which I'm very surprised because none of my cars have nice tires. So stick that under the car just in case. And then we're left with our brake assembly. So we have the wheel off of the car. Um, so what you want to do is this is the perfect time to visually inspect everything as I can already see this brake hose is out of its hanger um, and you can see well you can't really see but there's a nice big fat lip on these discs so you know they're good for a change the pads mm, still got a couple of mil left but we've got new ones so I don't want to put you don't really want to put new discs and old pads it's just Bit of a waste of time. Um, I believe the soft, the stuff that you'll need for this is a Torx bit for this one. I'll find out which one it is in a minute. So a Torx set, um, some 10 mil. Let's see if I can show. Howdy. You'll need 10 mils for the cal uh, for the caliper. Two 10 mils there, and then as you can see here, for the bracket, 
the carrier bracket is I think they're either 18s or 19s but I'll let you know okay guys so this little disc retainer screw is a Torx T30 so I'm gonna start by loosening that because I know they do like to get tight so there we go just put some pressure on it you don't want to put too much because they do like to snap but I'm just gonna I like loosening that first before I take everything off I'm gonna take it completely out and then put it in again if the disc moves whilst you're doing this I like to just get a screwdriver and wedge it up oh, I can't see I like to just wedge it in with the disc so the disc stops moving but I didn't have that problem today so take that completely out and see it now moves nice and freely so it's I'm not going to get up tight. Right, next thing is it's a little bit easier for yourselves. Turn the wheels so this caliper is sticking more towards you, so you've got a bit more space to fit your tools from. Now you can see you've got plenty of space to do activities. Let's proceed to take these caliper bolts out, get your 10 mil sorted, you're probably on there a bit tight, there's another bit on, trying to do them up, there we Your caliper should just be able to wiggle off like so. Caliper off, stick that out of the way for a minute, rest it on the top. Don't want to put any pressure on them brake lines, on that brake line. Um, so now you can remove the old pads. Well, quite a deeply pad to be fair. There we go, and you can see the pad there. It's, they're not too bad actually. We've got even wear, which is a good sign. I think just the discs are kaput. But I bought new discs and pads, so let's move on to trying to break these bad boys loose. Right, I've got my socket on my breaker bar. That will slot on nicely like that. And then because you've moved the wheel out, you've got plenty of leverage then to just try and break these bad boys loose. There we go. That one too tight to be fair. But if you're doing this with a tiny little ratchet, it'll probably take you a lot longer. So the top one. Ooh, wasabi. Stay. Next one. Perfect. Now I'm going to speed the process up. The impact. Much as I love this DeWalt, it is a bit heavy. There's one. Need a stench. Okay, let's try this one. Perfect. And out she comes. One. As you can see, they're quite substantial. And two. And then this carrier should just slide off just like that. You should have caliper removed I like to rest it on this little strap thing as I don't have any bungee cords so it just sits on there nice it takes the pressure off the brake line um, you should have that taken off your pads removed and your brake carrier removed now all you have to do is get that little Torx out I'm doing it up take that out and your disc now should to come off, there we go. And let's look at that crustiness, look at them studs. God, I'm jealous. Wish the box wagons had that. So, let's put this over here and inspect. There's a nice lip on that, and you can definitely feel it. 
So that is a good sign to when your discs are bad. So we've got our new stuff out. Um, now's the perfect time to double check that you have the correct size discs and pads. Um, as you can see on the old pads, the one that sits in front of the piston has this little notch on, this little metal thing. So let's get them in. And obviously when you get new discs, they package them with oil on so they don't corrode. So you want to give it a blast over with some brake cleaner and give your assembly a good brush with a wire brush. So here as well, you want to remove your caliper slider sliders. As you can see, these are dry. Give these a wipe down and re-grease these whilst you're there. Right, so everything is clean and ready to go on the car. Next thing you need to do is push your caliper back. Now, in an ideal world, you want to use a, a brake caliper piston pusher tool. <laughs> um, unfortunately, I lent mine to my old man, so I've had to come up with this contraption, but it does work. So I just use a normal I don't know, puller, a 13 mil socket on the end of that. And then you get your old brake discs and push that against the piston. And then you put your feet along here. And then you just crank. So the piston is all pushed back nicely. Now let's try and get this back together. Um, new disc is just resting on there with this little retaining screw. I like to put just a tiny bit of grease on the end for when that goes back in. There we go. Put the caliper back correctly. It should look like that, all nicely pressed. As for that, you'll know when it's completely done because you won't be able to push it back any further. Um, make sure you've given everything a good clean. I like to put a little bit of grease in where the brake pads go to stop any squeaking. Now I'll tell you one thing. So far, the Astro is a lot easier to work on than a Golf. Golf just like to give you headaches. Work it back on. And then you obviously don't want to do these up with an impact. Hand tight and then torque them down. That's the correct procedure. to your torque wrench, or in my case, said breaker bar. Just make sure that these are nicely tight on. Like I said, you don't want these coming undone. That will be a fun day. Now they're nicely tightened, you can put in your brake pads. So remember what I said, the one with no latch goes on the outside. Right, pads are on, caliper is on. That looks a whole lot better than before. And look at that meat, jeepers. Last thing is to do is you want to reinstall your brake line in this holder. Oh, like so. And you want to get in the car and press the brakes a little bit to get rid of that gap. But then, there you have it. Obviously you put your wheel on, I'm not going to show you how to do that because I'm sure you know that, but let me know if you think I should get a um, a stud kit for the uh, for the Golf because that would be quite cool to do. I'm pretty sure you can get them um, if you're interested in seeing how to do that. I might do that because this is so much nicer than trying to lift the heavy wheel by yourself. And you know, oh. Got some artwork on me on me done. So guys, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Um, if you want to keep up to date with the channel and follow the golf build and maintenance stuff on Astra's, um, consider hitting that subscribe button. So as always guys, thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one.